Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the first ever historic life raft event. After chaotic nuclear war, our civilization is in ruins. Five brave souls have band together, convening at this shore to forge a new beginning by means of sailing to a more suitable world beyond the sea. But only <laughs> one shall create the new world. The lifeboat is sturdy enough to carry five survivors, yes, but only one may bring their work aboard. <laughs> I'm just adding dramatic tension. <laughs> Do you like it? I feel very tense. <laughs> Tonight you will decide whose seminal work shall survive the apocalypse. Whose is the most, who, whose is the greatest to survive the apocalypse? Who shall usher in a new era in our new world? These five devotees, you will choose. You will choose one. And only one. Now I'm going to turn it over to the Spinoza representative. As the representative for Spinoza, I believe that to form a new beginning, one must take a philosophical viewpoint. After all, what is our world without philosophy? What work should be on the life raft? Why, Spinoza's, of course. Spinoza was one of the important philosophers, and his work, Ethics, is what should be on the craft. Why, you might ask? Well, because it shows that our happiness and well-being lie not in the life enslaved to the passions and to the passing goods we pursue daily, and neither in the related, unreflective attachment to the superstitions that pass as religion, but rather in the life of reason. By showing us that the universe is just made of one substance, and that forms of this substance just have different characteristics, he leads us to a definition that explains what it is to be human. His teachings within this book will show us how to rebuild our society on a firm foundation and have the new civilization to live in the harmony of reason. I ask you to please vote for Spinoza. Yes. <laughs> Psychology, in its most basic definition, is a study of human behavior. Had we studied the behavior of our predecessors, we wouldn't be at this beach arguing while our world's burning behind us. But innovated many practices that we use until this catastrophic event. He found the first laboratory dedicated to experimental psychology, with subsequent laboratories modeled closely to his original idea. He was a genius. No one in his lifetime, or even ours, could disprove his works. Bud wrote well over 55,000 pages during his lifetime, all dedicated to psychology. Why, that could stock a library. And should stock the library of the new world. Of those pages, his best known works, Principles of Physiological Psychology, was the very first textbook on the subject. With this work, we can study our own psychology. Our feelings, emotions, ideas, and desires, so that we may understand them, control them, and never resort to war ever again. We can finally and truly attain nirvana. Good evening. I'm representing um, Nikola Tesla. I'm going to take a minute out of my speech to talk about uh, Thomas Edison. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, with him as a god among scientists, ironic as that is, while Nikola Tesla was largely ignored. In fact, Edison stole Tesla's ideas and provided them as his own, during which the period um, which Tesla was employed by Edison, he redesigned Edison's severely in inefficient motors and generators. No one took notice and Edison was heralded as the new greatest inventor of all time. Tesla forged a way for alternating currents, creating a, the AC motor, which, unlike Edison's DC motor, do not require any sort of medical, mechanical aid. Tesla was the first to send a wireless radio transmission. He invented everything we associate with the radio, including antennas and tuners. 
yet he was not, cre not, he was not credited with these creations. He won a Nobel Prize for his wireless um, telegraphy, um, yet he was forgotten. But with Tesla's patent ab um, aboard our life raft, we can create our new society with a clean, efficient, high voltage electricity, be able to communicate via radio, and have our vehicles run on low maintenance alternating currents. To survive a new world, vote Tesla. for Alan Turing. Uh, math is the language of the universe. And whose works best exemplify the field of mathematics than Alan Turing's? With his techniques, he invented the Turing test, a simple process that could determine how com if computers could think. Also, uh, asking the pro provocative question, what is the difference between human intelligence and artificial intelligence? He was a genius, being utilized in the Second World War to decipher German encry um, yeah. encryptions. I wonder, had we used his deciphering techniques, would we have been spared our apocalyptic fate that brought us here today? He found the concept of, of he founded the concept of algorithms, thus pioneering the computer science age. Without this man, we would not have the computers that made our lives so easy. We would not be able to tweet, not be able to like. All that stuff. <laughs> Without this man, uh, he well, he created the first electronic computer known as the Colossus, uh, which you know, part of that sort of stuff. With Turing's work in our new world, we could utilize his notes and create a near perfect, uh, near perfect computers with artificial intelligence, so that this war may be never again be an issue. Alan Turing, people. <laughs> world. It's now a smoldering pile of ruin, desolate and devoid of life. And what could possibly be the reason for such atrocities? Men. <laughs> Men have been the head of the world since the dawn of humankind. They led the nations, they caused the wars, and they destroyed our homes. <laughs> the work that gets onto that boat should not be scientific, philosophical, or any other manner of gobbledygook. Instead, the works of Jane Austen should go aboard, including her very first published work, Pride and Prejudice, great book, read it, and so that the new civilization can know what the mistake in society was. Let the new society of the world know the horrid nature in which women were kept, so that they will know to never let it happen again. Mm. If men destroy the world, it is up to the women to rebuild it and start life anew. Vote Austen for a better fictional future. <laughs> Our five hopefuls vying for the position to start our world anew. Next, you're to, uh, now it's up to you to decide. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just so moved by everyone's <laughs> speeches, especially everyone's. <laughs> now it's up to you, the last survivors, to decide whose works shall be kept for our salvation. There's going to be a ballot. <laughs> just, there's, like everything's running together. On the ballot will be 12 true false statements. On those true false statements, next you will expose the opposing candidates to exaggerations and falsehoods by determining which information is true and false. And the false information you have to correct. Gasp. <laughs> Each correct answer on the ballot will be a point and vote for your own candidate. There's a, there's a potential for adding up to 12 points for the candidate that you chose for the correct answers that you made. Any wrong answers will not be counted. Once you have corrected the ballot, return it to the candidate you want to vote for in order so we may tally the votes and see who wins. Whose work shall survive the apocalypse? Who 
will be the new ruler of our utopian society. Punt. <laughs> no. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have a winner. And the winner of tonight's event is. Bum bum. Oh, second place. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> the first runner-up is. Bum bum. Bum bum. Jane Austen. Put up a, a valiant fight, but. Good lord. <laughs> the winner of tonight's Life Raft event is... Nikola Tesla. Here's your uh, cute little frog Life Raft thing. So you can put your uh, boats on it. I like to thank my fans. <laughs> I, I like it. I like it. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Yeah. You're the winner, Brad and Christian. You've got the little floaty around.